Grace and peace to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and welcome to worship at All Nations Church. Uh, a few of us were just participating in a bit of meet and greet time uh, before the service, and you are all invited to uh, another time after the service. The details about that were in the weekly update, and also we'll be posting them on both YouTube and Facebook so that you can easily connect. Now, this is a time for all of us to come together uh, to see one another, maybe to share some greetings, to talk a bit. Whether you have been a part of ANCL for a long time, maybe you've moved away, maybe you kind of feel like you're barely connected to the church, maybe you've never even visited. In any case, you are invited uh, to this uh, brief time of uh, socializing together, and we could all use a little bit of that, I think, in these times. Uh, exactly because it's been six weeks or so now that we've been um, apart, I would invite you once again to consider connecting in ways that perhaps you haven't taken advantage of yet. If you're not a part of a small group, uh, again, it's always a good time to find a small group, perhaps especially now when so many of them are online. It's in a way more convenient than ever and easier than ever to participate. Uh, so please uh, visit our website for more information also, I uh, want to let you know uh, again about all the podcasts that are happening. There's a lot of great content, interviews, um, original thoughts that we're sharing, uh, services and uh, sermons. It's a great way to be connected and to, to learn and be enriched in this time. And also, if you have prayer requests, uh, if you are in need, uh, if you just have something you want to share, we would really like to hear that. So. Please remember that you are part of a community and we want to be community to you. Uh, later in the service, we will hear the familiar passage, uh, Psalm 23, which speaks of the Lord as our shepherd. And as we begin our worship, hear these words from Isaiah. Uh, Isaiah is a, a book which uh, speaks of us as lost sheep who have gone astray, but also of the Lord as the shepherd who leads us. So hear these words. Yes, the sovereign Lord is coming in power. He will rule with a powerful arm. See, he brings his reward with him as he comes. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will carry the lambs in his arms, holding them close to his heart. He will gently lead the mother sheep with their young.
Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you that you are indeed our good shepherd. And we confess that we are so often like lost sheep, that even though you have come after us, sought us, found us, claimed us as your own, and brought us into your fold, that we often wander away. We do this deliberately at times, aware that we are wandering off apart from your fold. At other times we do it carelessly, not even aware that we're wandering off. Lord, in any case, we confess to you that it is in our nature to walk away, to get distracted, to seek other things. And we pray that you forgive us. And we thank you that you are not a shepherd that comes after us once, but then leaves us on our own, but who continually seeks us and finds us over and over again, that you desire to be with us. We thank you that that's the God that you are. And in this time, especially as we hear the words of Psalm 23, it feels as if some of us are indeed walking beside uh, still waters, beside the stream with green pastures, life is good. For others of us, it may feel indeed as if we are walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Lord, in any case, we pray that we might have a sense of your presence, that we might know that you walk with us both in the good times and the bad times, that your presence is not contingent upon the circumstances or how we feel about it. May we know that you are with us in all things. And so if we are doing well, help us to remember that we're not doing well because of ourselves, but because of the ways that you bless us and all things, that this is a gift. And for those of us who are struggling and for those all around uh, our community, uh, our country and the world who are walking in darkness in this time, Lord, we pray for them, especially the knowledge, the awareness that you are with them, no less than at any other time. And indeed, may you bring them through. May you accompany them through this time like the good shepherd you are and bring them to the other side to safety. Carry them in your arms, we pray. Through Christ, our Lord, who seeks us and finds us. Amen. We now come to a time of giving. And first, we should say thank you that so many have continued to give in these uncertain times. It makes our ministry possible. So thank you for continuing to give. And for those of you who perhaps have felt like uh, in these uncertain times you're not able to give as much, that's okay too. We understand. But if you are able to give, we would invite you to do so, maybe if you haven't before, uh, to set up a, a standing order. But particularly right now, we would invite you to give over and above what you might normally give to the Benevolent Fund. This is the fund out of which uh, we are able to help people who are in need, uh, all kinds of needs that come to us. Uh, that fund is, is getting a bit low uh, because we have helped a lot of people this year. We give money from the general budget to that fund every year, but we also seek to replenish it through individual gifts. So if you uh, would like to make such a gift, we would invite you to do so. And this will directly help people in our community who are in need. Thank you. Lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his 
Today's scripture is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessing. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life. And now we live in the house of the Lord forever. This is the word of the Lord. Over the last month, I think I've heard more about um, the idea of comfort food than I've heard for a long time. And it reminds me that in times that are stressful, uh, difficult, where there's fear, that often we are hungry uh, for comfort. And if comfort food isn't a, a, um, uh, something that makes sense to you, I, I'm at home, so I can kind of give you some examples of, of what those are. So uh, this is uh, potato chips. Um, highly regarded amongst many as one of the greatest comfort foods out there. Um, peanut butter. Uh, now, I'm hopefully, that maybe brings to mind some different things that might be uh, food that brings you comfort, uh, helps you relax. Maybe it's a meal that your mother or father, aunt or uncle uh, made that uh, just brings uh, joy and relief um, and makes you go that everything's okay. 
Um, had an interesting thing happen for Beth. It's, it's uh, again, a strange, amazing world we live in. Uh, Beth uh, was shopping for her uh, 89-year-old father who lives in Kentucky and shopping and then making it so they would drop it off at the door, ring the doorbell, and they wouldn't have to have contact, uh, which is just an amazing service that is available to different people. But uh, when she was going to check out, it, it asked, did you forget anything? And it gave you some different options like potato chips or cookies or sugary drinks. There was nothing healthy in the options they gave you because they know that if you see broccoli, you probably will say, no, thank you, I don't want that. But if you see cookies, because those are comfort food and because of the sugar content and flour and all those things, that your mind's going to say, I need to have that. And so I thought today I would offer you some comfort food, some comfort food for your soul. Um, and the wonderful thing about comfort food for your soul is that um, unlike food, it, it can be savored for days or for months or even for a lifetime, and therefore it satisfies us. And Psalm 23 um, speaks to our fears and to our hopes, and it reminds us that our life is sustained by God's presence, that his presence is there and that he cares for us, that he provides for us, that he protects us and he guides us. And the psalm is really grounded in verse 1, which tells us, the Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. And the rest of the psalm is an explanation of, of what that is like, what, what God mean our needs is all about in his being the shepherd for us. But it reminds us, because the Lord is, all, I, the, all that I need, I have. Or as other versions say, I shall not want. And just as a shepherd is essential to the life of the flock, so the Lord is essential to your life and to my life. And it's the, his, this comfort for the soul that is there because the shepherd is, is there with us, that he's present um, with us, not just one who watches from afar, but who is present with the sheep. And first, he's present in this psalm, you can see, with the sheep and that he provides for them. He provides rest for the sheep. He provides them a place to lie down to rest, to be calm, to be safe. He also provides food for the sheep, green pastures where they can eat and they can be nourished and they can have all that they need physically in terms of their food. And that he also provides for them a life and refreshment, still waters. Those waters are life-giving, but they're also, they help to restore the this life of the sheep, like a good drink of water uh, provides for us on a hot summer's day. But not just, he doesn't just provide for us, but he also guides us through life. And he leads us on, it says, the right path, his path, the path that reflects his goodness, the path that is like his name, one that is, is right and upright and good. Um, and it reminds us in this passage that every path that we go on in life is the path that God leads us on, even to the dark valley even in the valley where we are near to death. That is his path as well. And it tells us he's not in front of us, he's not behind us, but he is right by our side, next to us, alongside you and me as we walk through the deepest, darkest, and most difficult days of our life. And that reality brings comfort to us. So even when in my nature or in your nature, we feel like we have a right to be fearful, we are reminded that we don't have to fear because he is next to us and his rod, which is there to fight off the enemies and his shepherd's staff, which is there to guide and direct us, tells us that we don't have to fear, that someone else is leading and guiding and taking care of us, that the shepherd is here and the shepherd will provide what you and what I need in this time. There's probably no better all-encompassing intimate image of God in the Old Testament than this image of the shepherd and the sheep. And it's not really until you get to Jesus when he talks about the God as father that you have a better image, a more beautiful image, a more image that reflects more perfectly who God is to us. And the reality is there's a lot of fear in our life, isn't there? If we walk through life alone, there's a lot of fears we can have right now if we believe that it's all on us, that it's all up to our ability, all up to our strength, all up to our insight 
to be able to find our way through, and that's all there is, then certainly we have good reasons to fear because our limitations are great. But that's not all there is. We are his sheep. The Lord is our shepherd. And in him, he promises that we will have all that we need for life. My friend, that's comfort food for your soul. And it meets us when in whatever situation we find ourselves in. Because the Lord is, I have all that I need. You have all that you need. And I want you to think for a moment about your needs and your wants. Maybe the things that you've thought about this week that have caused you to fear, uh, or maybe this month, uh, your needs and your wants. And I want you to take a moment in your head, or maybe even better, if you're willing to, to say out loud what those are, what your needs and wants were, what you have been afraid of. And I want to give you just a moment to do that. And I have a question for you. As you think about those things, those situations, which of these that I'm about to share with you meets that need, that fear, such that you can lay it aside? Is it that the Lord provides? Is it that the Lord protects? Is it that the Lord guides? Is it that the Lord cares? Is it that the Lord heals? protects, guides, provides, cares, or heals. Which one of those words resonate to your soul, allows you to relax, find peace again? And so what I want to encourage you to do is to apply that right now to your life and say, that because the Lord is my shepherd who provides, I don't have to be afraid of my work situation. Because the Lord is the one who guides, I know that I can lead my kids through this in a way that we can learn and grow closer together. I don't need to fear. And I'd encourage you to take each of your fears and to do that because the Lord is my shepherd who provides or protects or cares or heals. I don't need to fear what I'm fearing. And as your heart is freed from that fear or that anxiety, or that want that God promises to meet, that need that you have, then I would encourage you to turn that from with a freed heart for prayer towards others. As you walk around and see others, maybe in your family, in your neighborhood, who you see are, are fearful to pray for them, that they would too encounter the shepherd. They would meet what he has to offer them and that they would find that he meets all their needs all of their wants. In verse 5, the psalm takes a shift in a more personal direction, and it goes from talking about he, the Lord, and it talks about you. And it's a more intimate um, drawing in of us into the next kind of image that, that God provides for us to see how he shepherds and cares for us. And the idea actually of the shepherd and the sheep starts to fade away in verse 5 to the end of the psalm. And we find ourselves as God's human guests at his victory celebration with our enemies presumably now captured, disarmed, watching us as we celebrate God's victory over them. And the psalmist probably had in mind people that he had known, people that he knew were against him, enemies of of the nation um, that he was a part of. But I think we can add not just our list of who we might see as enemies, things that we fear, but we can also add the list of this virus, is that one day we will stand and celebrate. And this virus and many of the other things that have been uh, against us in this life will be watching as we celebrate God's love, God's provision, God's care at his table. And I find this image even more powerful when you put it together with the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that we celebrate each Easter and beyond, because Easter is about God's victory and about restoration, and about the Lord guiding Jesus and us through the valley of death, and even death itself, to everlasting life. So we are reminded that we are his guests at his celebration, 
And we're not just there as a once in a lifetime opportunity that we get to take advantage of today or in this moment, but the day after day, we are participants at the Lord's table, at his celebration. And we eat together. And that eating together, that sharing the meal has the idea of of a mutual loyalty, that we are loyal to him and that he is loyal to us. You and I are guests in the Lord's house, celebrating his victory forever and ever because of Jesus Christ. Our heads are anointed with oil. Our cups overflow and blessings surround us in every direction. And we live with the assurance that the Lord's goodness and his unfailing love pursues us all the days of our life. And that we, in the future, will dwell in his house forever. I want you to capture that idea. That God's goodness and unfailing love pursues you. Pursues me. Even when we run away, even when we ignore it, it will come around to the other side and say, I'm here. Don't ignore me. God pursues us. And it's a beautiful reminder of why it is so good that we are not in charge, but God is the shepherd. I wonder about sheep. I wonder if they think that they're pretty smart. I wonder if they think that most of the time that they can do all the things that they need on their own, provide, protect, and get to the right places. To be honest, I really don't know what sheep think, but I know about people. And I know that we do think that we can and oftentimes must do this ourselves, that we must provide and protect. We must get to where we're going on our own. And yet life reminds us again and again, whether we're sheep or people, that that's not true. That they and we need a shepherd. And in a wonderful way, Psalm 23 reminds us that we already have one. And the psalm is comfort food to your soul and to my soul. It's what we need to hear and believe and know. Maybe you don't feel it today. Maybe you're feeling great, fine, relaxed. But you and I will need to be reminded that the Lord is the shepherd, that we need a shepherd. And when we are looking, when we are in need, we'll know who to turn to. The Lord is our shepherd. Therefore, we have all that we need. Do you bow your heads with me as we pray? Father, we give you thanks for this wonderful comfort that this is who you are, the shepherd, and that we are the sheep, and that you are there to guide and lead, and we are there to follow and to learn, and that we don't just have to look out for ourselves, but that you look out for and care for us, and not just us, but for many, many others. We give you thanks for that, and we pray that you would help us not to be foolish sheep who turn away, but we would be sheep who look to you, who listen for you, and who follow your voice as we hear it. We give you thanks for this comfort, which is far greater than any food that we could hope to eat and any moment that we could hope to share with anyone else. And it lasts forever and ever. Amen. Oh,
Our prayer for you today is as you go out into your life, into the world with your family, at your work, with friends, as you enter into this new season of spring, that you will know that you are shepherded and led, and that you are provided for and protected, and that the Lord himself is your shepherd, that Jesus is the one who leads the sheep, and the Spirit gives us ears and hearts to listen and to follow. Go in that knowledge. Go in hope. Go with joy. Go and celebrate. God bless you. Have a great week. Take care. That's all, folks.